Welcome to Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act training through the Upper Grand District School Board. To help improve conditions for the nearly 2 million Ontarians with disabilities, a law was passed in 2005 called Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act, also known as AODA. The purpose of the Act, to achieve a fully accessible Ontario by 2025, to develop, implement, and enforce accessibility standards in both private and public sectors. This means that Ontario school boards are no exception and they should be compliant with AODA and its standards. Objectives To understand the purpose of AODA and its requirements. To learn how to interact and communicate with persons with disabilities. To understand the role of assistive devices for persons with disabilities and how they can be made available at your organization. Understand what actions to take if a person is having trouble accessing information at your organization. Understanding the Human Rights Code and AODA. The Human Rights Code prohibits discrimination against a person on the basis of a disability. Meeting AODA requirements does not mean that an organization is exempt from human rights complaints on the basis of disability. Human rights and AODA work together to ensure equal rights for those with disabilities. The code will override the AODA if there is a conflict between these two pieces of legislation. What is a disability? A disability is a physical or mental condition that limits a person's movement, senses, or activities. The AODA uses the same definition of disability as the Ontario Human Rights Code. Disabilities are not always visible. Be considerate and aware of any barriers that may cause conflict for visible or invisible disabilities. Disabilities can be a physical disability, a learning disability, a mental disorder, a workplace injury for which compensation has been received. What is a barrier? A barrier is anything that stops or restricts a person with a disability. When people imagine barriers, they often think of physical obstructions such as not having a ramp present. Physical barriers are not the only type of barriers. The goal of AODA is to identify, remove, and prevent the barriers that make life difficult for those who have disabilities. Examples of barriers. Information and communication barriers. Print that is too small. Websites that can't be accessed by people who are unable to use a mouse. Signs that are not clearly or easily understood. Architectural or physical barriers include spaces with poor lighting for those with visual impairments, hallways and doors that are too narrow or restricted for wheelchair access, organizational barriers, barriers that limit people with disabilities from entering or advancing in the workplace. What does accessible education look like? The Ontario Human Rights Commission has its own recommendations regarding accessibility in schools, entitled Guidelines on Accessible Education. These guidelines provide clarification on the following. Creating a welcoming environment for students. Accommodation process and planning. Right to confidentiality and disclosure of information. The undue hardship standard. And rights and responsibilities of those involved in accommodation process. Five areas of focus for AODA. Accessible customer service, accessible information and communications, accessible built environment, employment accessibility, and accessible transportation. Sections of focus for education. In addition to the customer service standard, school boards and their employees need to be primarily concerned with the following subgroups. Accessible information and communication, employment accessibility, and transportation. Applicable legislation. Below are the two pieces of legislation that are applicable to school boards. The accessibility standards for customer service, known as the CSS, which regulates and sets requirements for accessible customer service. The Integrated Accessibility Standards Regulation, known as ISAR, which establishes the accessibility standards for information and communications and employment and transportation. The CSS requirement. In order to provide accessible customer service to those with disabilities, AODA requires employers to create and put in place an accessibility plan that does the following. Considers a person's disability when communicating with them. Allows assistive devices such as wheelchairs, oxygen tanks, and walkers. Allows for service animals. Welcomes support persons. Lets customers know when accessible services are not available. Invites customer feedback and train staff on accessible customer service. 
Communication. Communication is a key component of the CSS. The first thing to keep in mind is that there is no one-size-fits-all approach to communicating with those with disabilities. It's best to respond in the most appropriate manner based on the individual circumstances. Remember the following. Common sense, patience, respect, and a genuine willingness to help. Tips and tricks for communicating. Hearing impairments. Consider someone has a hearing impairment but can read perfectly well. One person may offer that you talk in a louder voice, whereas another might prefer that you write out what you want to say or use a sign language interpreter. It's always best to simply ask. Vision impairments. Do not assume the customer cannot see you. Speak directly to your customer and offer your elbow to guide them. Be patient and wait for permission to assist. Describe landmarks and be precise with your information. What is an assistive device? An assistive device is a tool, technology, or other mechanism that enables a person with a disability to do everyday tasks and activities such as moving, communicating, or lifting. It helps the person to maintain their independence at home, at work, or in the community. Do not touch or handle any assistive devices without permission. Do not move assistive devices out of your customer's reach, and let your customers know about accessible features at your organization. Some examples of assistive devices include FM transmitter systems or amplification devices, hearing aids, mobility devices such as wheelchairs, walkers, or canes, and oxygen tanks. Common assistive devices, service animals. Service animals accompanying persons with disabilities are welcome in our schools and facilities. A service animal can be any type of animal, not just a dog. They are a working animal and should be respected as such. Do not touch or address the animal. While the facility and or school is not responsible for the care and supervision of service animals, all school staff should respect the importance of service animals for people with disabilities. Common Assistive Devices – Support Persons Support persons assisting a person with a disability may be a paid professional, a volunteer, or a family member or friend. Please note that a support person is not an employee of the board who supports a student in the system. Best Practices for Working with Support Persons Address the customer, such as student, parent, or community member, not the interpreter or support person. Look at and speak directly to the customer. You do not need to ignore the support person. However, make sure that your main focus is on the interaction with your customer. Integrated Accessibility Standards Regulation. The IASR ensures that an organization provides a feedback process, that notifications of disruptions are posted, that employees are trained, and the responsibilities of accessibility coordinator and employee are met. Notice of Disruption. Organizations must provide persons with disabilities advance notice should any planned or unplanned disruption of service occur. Not all disruptions need to be announced, only when it will affect those with a disability. A notice should include a reason, how long the disruption is intended to last, and what alternative facilities or services exist, if any. Example for notice of disruption. An inclement weather day has caused buses and transportation services to be cancelled. Since this has a direct impact on those with disabilities, the school board must work with their team to ensure that parents are notified appropriately. The notice will include the reason for the disruption, the start and expected end date, if available, and any alternative arrangements in progress. The feedback process. Soliciting feedback is important under AODA. Anyone should be able to comment on the provision of goods and services to people with disabilities. Information about this feedback process should be readily available to the public and should include what actions are to be taken after you've received a complaint. For feedback channels, remember to keep accessibility in mind. People with various disabilities may need to use your feedback system, so it must be accessible and be able to accommodate different types of disabilities. The Feedback Process at UGDSB The Upper Grand District School Board welcomes feedback and comments about our accessibility. Feedback can be sent through a variety of forums, including online, via email, and via telephone. Alternative Formats Educational institutions must provide accessibility by way of alternative formats for the following resources, emergency procedures, school websites, and educational and training resources. 
If information or communications are not convertible, educational institutions must provide the person an explanation of why the information is not convertible. There are a variety of formats that help people with disabilities. Some examples include larger print, screen readers, braille, audio, and captioning. Alternative formats at Upper Grand District School Board. As of January 1, 2015, schools, offices, and facilities will provide accessible formats and communication support to persons with disabilities when requested to do so. For documents or other communications that are made available to the public or to which the requester is entitled to receive. Some examples include the minutes of a regular session of a board meeting, a school newsletter, a letter from the principal, or a parent-teacher interview. The accessible format or communication support will be provided in a timely manner. The accessible format or communication support will take into account the person's accessibility needs. If there is a cost, it will be no more than that charged to another person. Staff will consult with the person making the request in determining the suitability of the accessible format or communication support. Quick tips for effective communication. If you are unsure of what to do, ask the person, may I help you? The person with a disability generally knows if they need help and how you can provide it. Don't touch a person with a disability without asking. This is even something as simple as a tap on the shoulder. Avoid stereotypes and do not make assumptions about what kind of disability someone has. Some disabilities are not visible and people are not required to give you any information about any disability that they may have. Always remember to be patient. Don't touch equipment or assistive devices such as wheelchairs, canes, oxygen tanks without permission. If necessary, ask if another method of communication other than speaking would work best. If you do have permission to move a person in a wheelchair, do not leave them in an awkward, dangerous, or undignified position such as facing a wall or in the path of opening doors. Thank you for participating in this training module. The Upper Grand District School Board is committed to the continual improvement of accessibility and the ongoing removal of barriers in order to provide greater equity for all. For our full policies and procedures manual regarding AODA, click here.